You are clear to enter. Welcome to Pizza Planet. Good. Okay. Hello. Uh, I'm Aaron. I'm Tom. And we are dog parents. What else are we? Soon to be regular parents. And we're movie lovers. So this is a podcast <laughs> that we're calling Baby's First Watch List. And I'll talk about why in a little bit. So, yeah. Anything else for our special intro before we get started? No, I think most of you listening to this already know who we are probably because yep. we're not going to have anybody <laughs> that we don't know. I can't imagine listening to this. So, If we did, that would be really fun. On our little blog, we get people from Estonia. We had a person from Estonia. <laughs> no, okay. okay. <laughs> we didn't have people. We had people from all over uh, reading our special blog that we have. So who knows where our podcast will lead. npm.squarespace.com. Please go uh, check it out. So let's talk about the podcast itself, though, because I feel like it has been a little bit of a long time coming. Feels like a lifetime ago because I can trace it all the way back to that fateful month that we all remember, March 2020. <laughs> Everybody's favorite month ever. It's a great thing to start a podcast talking about <laughs> the pandemic. Isn't it fun? Start with the pandemic. Um, there's one night that I can trace it to, and I'm sure you know of that yeah, night. Yeah, obviously. Momentous events. Three of them collided. Uh, during one fateful evening, um, we're ready to go to bed. It was probably what, like nine, I guess, seven thirty, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Whenever, uh, <laughs> never mind. Continue. And we found out, kind of like within two minutes of each other, that the NBA season was canceled. Thank you, Rudy Gobert. That was one. Oh yeah, remember that? We found out that Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson announced that they had COVID. And that was like the first big one. And perhaps most importantly. I vote here most tragically. <laughs> Sarah Palin was revealed as the bear on the mass singer. Now, Tom, do you remember what song she sang? Yeah, of course I do. How could I forget <laughs> Sarah Palin dancing around singing Baby Got Back and as was, the world was no, literally, ending. It's, literally it's, ending. <laughs> That's it. It's because like she was singing Baby Got Back in like the bottom half of a bear outfit as like the life that we've all known. Yeah, crashing down around us. Yeah, it was truly like uh, wild. It yeah. was. It Things was, still have not been the same since that day. No. And we. I thought that it would be kind of like knocked back by Rudy Giuliani being revealed on The Masked no, Singer. No, but it just, didn't do no. it. No. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so that's where um, this sort of idea to really delve deep into movies started. That it, that has nothing to do with No, well, movies, I, but, there is a connection here. Yeah, there because is. there were things that were, like, canceled left and right. And one of them was the March Madness tournament, um, which, if you don't know, is college basketball. And I think she had to write that down. <laughs> I did have to write that down. Um, and so I, yes, I'm taking credit for the idea. I hatched... Um, this idea because we've always been big cinema people. I mean, I've always been one. I've been an avid movie watcher. I mean, on my own since middle school, and before then, I've always loved movies too. And and Tom, you you've adapted it as a hobby as well. Yeah, I mean, adopted I, 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 I yeah. adapted. It. I really started uh, the 2014 Oscars when like Boyhood and Birdman and all those movies were um, pretty hot, and they were all winning all the awards. I, I just thought it was interesting to, to get into like the best pictures and then uh, just sort of expanded from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he, he's got me into doing that too, which I'm embarrassed that I didn't do it first because I always pride myself on being a trendsetter. But that's yeah. okay. Um, and so for us, one of the worst kind of like 8 p.m. convos that we can have is the, well, what do you want to watch? Oh, let's just put on Netflix. Let's see what, you know, what comes up. And then all of a sudden it's 930 and it's time for bed. And then we're just putting on like King of Queens or something <laughs> or Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives. Always. I was watching that today. Um, 
So I figured that what we could do is we could make a list of movies that we could refer back to. Um, And it seemed that, you know, all right, we were going to have a couple weeks of time on our hands. So, uh, you know, we could knock a couple of those movies out that had been on our lists forever. um, Ones that maybe one of us had seen, but not the other. Um, And we started with the 2010s list. We added movies that were big at the Oscars, the Globes, yikes, uh, the Indie Spirit Awards even. And then we went through like, okay, what made a bajillion dollars? What had a cultural impact in 2012? Things like that. Um, And then at the end, once we made our way through the list, we were going to make a March Madness style bracket, um, which would end, culminate in our favorite film of the decade. And that felt like it was going to be like a really big undertaking at first. And then it became very clear that COVID wasn't a sit in your house for two weeks and just like wait for it to pass, which now looking back, is like so embarrassing that that was like the plan. <laughs> like literally at school, they were like, make sure you make two weeks of plans. Oh, <laughs> so like now I'm just like, oh, yikes. <laughs> We had somebody at my work handing out um, like slips of paper, like printing out articles and being like, you know, this is nothing to worry about. We're all going to be OK. Like, we'll see you, you know, later this month or, or whatever, whatever it ended up being. And then I was like, I, I haven't seen that guy since that day. So, <laughs> Dear listener, we were not all OK. Yes, yeah. um, so we ended up watching over 200 movies that first year. Um that 2010s bracket is up on Motion Picture Madness, which is our little companion blog. Tom, what's the, what's the link? mpm.squarespace.com and also on Instagram at Motion Picture Madness. Yeah, and so you can see who won our 2010s bracket. No spoilers. Um, and we wrote a ton of stuff about other movies as well. And I feel like that's been... Yeah, we, we sort of do the Oscars every year. We, we write reviews about the best pictures, the last two years at least. Every now and then, one of us will have an idea and just write an article about it. About um, Paddington 2. Yeah, yeah. anything. <laughs> um, fashion in the 2000s movies. 2000s fashion, yes. Um, you know, it's just there for whenever we feel like writing about something or if we feel inspired or whatever. So it's, uh, yeah. I mean, if you, again, if you are listening to this podcast, you already know about you this. You know so. about this, but you know us. So yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Um, and personally, like Tom uh, didn't really allude to, but outright stated, um, we have had a lot going on as well. We are excited to be welcoming our first human child um, into this messed up world. <laughs> In this, ah! oh, also there's, there's, our, a, uh, there's our non-human child that's mad. <laughs> We're yeah. not mentioning her. Yep, that's that's uh, that's April. Um, but yeah, he's coming in just a couple months. Like, not soon enough, but soon. Um, and that's where this podcast comes in. So, since we love talking about movies, we want to share our love of film with our son and push all of our hopes, dreams, and interests into him. Um, We want to make sort of an audio list of sorts. Uh, And that's where baby's first watch list comes into play. So the plan here is to talk about different movies and to decide whether we would recommend it to our future children or not. Um, And full disclosure, I am not sure that I've ever regretted watching a movie I've seen. So I feel like every time I'm going to be like, yeah, put it on the list. <laughs> Tom might yeah, be a I little mean, bit more. I mean, I might be a little bit more like discerning, but this is not something, just so you know, where, where we're going to be like really slamming movies or anything like that. Unless, unless it really, really deserves it. Like if, never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll we'll get, get, we'll get to, to some of those. <laughs> but um, I mean, we just love movies. So we just like to talk about movies that we like. Who likes to talk about stuff they don't like? Exactly. So let's talk about the first movie that we want to um, consider for Baby's First Watch List, which is 1995's uh, Pixar classic Toy Story. I bet. I wonder where this one's going to land on the watch list. <laughs> you know, I hated it. Um, yeah. So, Tom, break it down for us, Mr. Lawyer, on um, what the movie summary is. Well, if, if someone has... I don't know. Like, who hasn't seen Toy Story? Well, yeah. I mean, if by some odd chance you've never seen this movie or maybe you haven't seen it in a while, uh, you might need some like a little bit of a refresher. Or if you are our unborn son listening to this for the first time, um, 
Basically, Toy Story was uh, directed by John Lasseter, who is a terrible Ooh, person. Uh, written by the Academy Award nominated team of Andrew Stanton, uh, who still directs. Uh, so I believe he directed Soul. He um he directed Finding Nemo, I know, and a couple of the other ones. Wally. Okay, it might have been Wally. Yeah, and he's written like a bajillion of the Pixar. Yeah, so he, he's he's heavily involved in Pixar. There was also Joel Cohen, but not that Joel Cohen. <laughs> it's Joel Cohen with an H, um, and. Alex Sekolo, and as well as Joss Whedon, who is Bill also Hiss. not not a great person. <laughs> this is not really like a, uh, a list of like amazing yeah, people. To yeah. be honest with it's you, it's not the who's who here. <laughs> um, it still currently has a a one hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes after only, weirdly only ninety two reviews. Um, it was nominated for four Oscars, including Best Original Screenplay, as I noted. Uh, this, which is not a category anymore, Best Original Musical or Comedy Score. Um, Randy Newman, The Gods, uh, You've Got a Friend in Me was nominated for Best Original Song. And uh, it was also, it won a Special Achievement Award for John Lasseter, which, again, whatever. Um, so, anyway, again, here is a plot summary of Toy Story. So, a bunch of toys, you know the gang. Woody, Ham, Potato Head, Bo Peep, Rex, the whole crew. They're getting ready for their owner, Andy, to move to a new house. Um, Woody has a wonderful, idyllic relationship with Andy, so much so that the rootin' tootin' cowboy and his buddy have a montage set to You've Got a Friend in Me, which everybody knows. As for the other toys, with, with such a stressful event approaching, they kind of freak out because Andy's friends suddenly come over out of nowhere to throw him an early birthday party. And what comes with this birthday party? You guessed it. Andy gets a brand new Buzz Lightyear doll, which sends Woody spiraling. For real. Buzz is a walking, talking, karate chopping action figure, and Woody is, in his self conscious view, a beat up old cowboy doll with a pull string. Buzz poison the water hole, let's just say that. What's more is that Buzz believes he is Buzz Lightyear and not a toy. After Buzz quote unquote flies or falls with style, as Woody uh, describes it as, Woody turns bloodthirsty. He tries to use RC, the remote controlled car, to knock Buzz behind a desk. But the rest of the gang sees through the accident, essentially, and rightly, in my view, brands Woody as an attempted murderer. <laughs> um, Andy takes not just Woody, but Buzz to a night out to Pizza Planet with his family, but the toys fall out of the car at a gas station since they're fighting, and they have to work their way back together. However, once they make it to Pizza Planet, when Buzz thinks that he can use a rocket to get back to his, his home, it turns out that it's an arcade claw machine game full of alien toys which treat the claw as their god even worse who plays the game next but andy's neighbor sid who we see earlier in the movie exploding toys in his backyard with his dog scud <laughs> love scud sure enough uh sid grabs buzz with woody coming along as a bonus prize and brings them home where they're stuck in a room with frankenstein style toys sid has been removing certain pieces of his sister's toys and attaching them to other toys to create brand new hybrids. So, for example, there's a baby's head with its eye poked out, crossed with a metal spider, which still haunts my dreams to this day, a jack-in-the-box with a giant hand that shoots out of it, and many other similarly grotesque toy crossovers. I like the fisher, like the fishing pole with sexy legs. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woody calls it legs. <laughs> um so as they're trying to escape, Buzz notices a TV commercial for the Buzz Lightyear toys, and he has the first of his many identity crises throughout the series, trying to fly out of Sid's window but crashing to the ground and losing his arm, set to another classic, classic Randy Newman song. I did not remember. Strange things are happening to me. I did not remember that song. Um, Hey, so I don't expect this to be a super fact check heavy podcast, but every now and then Aaron or I might jump in with something like a footnote, as we like to call this. I'm coming back here as I'm editing because I want to give the man his due. I am totally wrong right here. Strange Things plays during the montage when Andy replaces Woody with Buzz and the wallpaper, bedsheets, and room decor change to space-themed instead of cowboy-themed, and Woody ends up in the toy chest rather than on the bed with his owner. The song that plays when Buzz fails to fly through Sid's window is in fact a third Randy Newman song called I Will Go Sailing No More. Much slower, really sad for a kid's movie, a real downer. Anyway. I just wanted to be clear so that this peer-reviewed podcast can have some integrity and also so that I don't have Randy Newman's people coming after me. And now back to the podcast. Sid's sister Hannah scoops him up and forces him to join a tea party with her beheaded toys. Uh, Marie Antoinette and her sister, Buzz quips. <laughs> As a result, Buzz becomes the incomparable Mrs. Nesbitt. 
<laughs> April doesn't like Mrs. Nesbitt. I don't know if you heard that growl, but um, anyway, Woody doesn't like Mrs. Nesbitt either, and so he tries to get Buzz to snap out of his depression and return to Andy's house, and make everything cool again. But in doing so, reveals to the toys across the way that Buzz is now armless, not making himself look great in his murder case. No. Um, so they say, screw it. We're not letting you guys back over. Uh, so Sid straps a firework to Buzz and gets ready to, quote, send him into orbit the next morning. But Woody, with the help of Sid's mistreated toys, confronts Sid by literally talking directly to him and threatening him, most likely scarring him for the rest of his life and creating years of either therapy or repressed terror. This happens to be the same day Andy is moving. Woody and Buzz, now fully formed friends, escaped from Sid's uh, backyard, try to catch up to the moving van and have to beat out Scud in order to do so. Woody gets to the moving truck, removes RC, and after the rest of the toys toss Woody out into the street, he has to use RC to get both himself and Buzz back on the truck. However, RC runs out of batteries. They're stuck in the middle of the road. The moving van is rapidly coming out of sight. So what do they do? They light the firework, still strapped to Buzz's back, shoot off down the street and into the air, exploding the firework and falling with style once more, sending RC back into the moving van and our heroes somehow straight through the sunroof of Andy's mom's car. The movie ends at Christmas time in Andy's new home when Andy's next set of gifts arrive. These gifts include a Mrs. Potato Head, making um, one certain resident of the home <laughs> quite uh, quite happy. Uh, and as Woody jokes that Andy can't get anything worse than bugs, the barking of a dachshund blares through the toy radio and the credits roll. And that is it. Wow. You didn't just like copy that off Wikipedia? No, I used Wikipedia as a guide. But... <laughs> yeah, it's all you, baby. Yeah, I mean... I added my color commentary. That's in there. excellent. And I shortened it a little bit. The Wikipedia plot summary is really long. <laughs> Plus, we shouldn't be stealing things from Wikipedia. It's well. Wikipedia. I could have wrote it. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Now, Tom, do you remember the first time that you ever saw Toy Story? Because clearly, we just watched it a couple days ago. Um, but obviously, you've seen it a few times before then. I don't remember my first time, but... I mean, honestly, as far back as I remember, Toy Story has been in my life. Like, yeah. I mean, like, like you said, you didn't remember the the second Randy Newman song. I didn't. Uh, I could sing it. I won't do that, but I could sing like most of that song. So that that's been in my life for a long time, and it's been a constant in my life for a long time. Yeah, I don't remember seeing Toy Story either. What I do remember is my sister had a Mr. Potato Head doll, which I didn't tell you this. And he, all of those like lines, like, what are you looking at, you hockey puck? That's a great yes. And all those, they, you would like press something and what? it would do it. It, it. So I had, we had that toy at my house. That's probably why in the movie they did that little joke with the hockey puck. So funny. Which, if you haven't seen Toy Story in a while, you got to watch it. It's It holds up. I it mean, holds up. The animation is a little iffy. But, scud, poor Scud. But for the time, it was so great and, and, and revolutionary that I could sort of give it a pass. But yeah. like, if you haven't seen it in a while, just go back and give it a watch. That screenplay is tight. It is. It is. It's Every like 88 single minutes. word is, is right, yes. on, right on target. Um, so yeah, I don't quite remember my first time, but it's basically, it shaped a lot of uh, my movie watching and, and all that when I was younger in terms of animated movies. Well, that's perfect because my first question for you, um, besides all the ones that I've already asked. No, no, no. This is the first one. <laughs> the first big important, the very important question I have to ask for this is what toy from Toy Story 1? We're not going into the extended universe here. So I can't use Stinky Pete the Prospector? You can't use Prospector Stinky, which there was a guy from my high school who they called Stinky Pete. Oh, no. I Listen, I don't know. Um, which toy from Toy Story 1? Would you want to get for your birthday? Hmm. Oh, wait. Okay. She said toy? <laughs> yeah. Um, what I want to get for my birthday. Am I this old or am I that? <laughs> am I a kid? Ah, whatever. Um, I mean, Buzz Lightyear's awesome. Ah! All right, Buzz Light, a Buzz I'm, Lightyear fan? Okay. I'm not a Buzz Lightyear fan, but he's got the most going on for him. Yeah, I guess. I don't know if I would have like changed my like like betting like Andy did, but yeah, Andy went all in. Yeah, Andy was a little <laughs> yeah, that was a little weird. 
Um, Andy was like part of like BTS army vibes when yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Buzz. Absolutely. <laughs> if they could get all the buzz stands together to like <laughs> hijack a bunch of causes online. Um, no, but I mean, I love Slinky. Yeah. Slinky's the best. I would have take I would have taken Slinky when I was when I was six. I would take I'm 30. I would take Slinky this Christmas. Okay. Slinky is a classic. Slinky's a great option, especially because the town that I grew up in made the steel wire for the original Slinky. Well, the man, one of the men that the town is named after, did the town. <laughs> well, uh, excuse me. Uh, aren't we talking about the like the union members who made that steel? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. I would have picked. I don't think there were unions. Back in 1905? I don't know, actually. I really am not sure. Um, I would obviously pick um, either Mr. Potato Head because we had a Mr. Potato Head, and he's just, he's so funny, Um, or uh, Ham because he's also a bank. I was going to say, yeah. I mean, he was was in the, he was a, uh, he's on the Mount Rushmore for me because you could literally put money in him, even though I'm not sure how much, how much longer that change is going to be considered money. Yeah, that's true. Um, I also liked some of the like um, kind of lesser appreciated toys, um, like the skateboard at Sid's house. N- no, nothing at Sid's. You know what? I appreciate Sid's toys. Um, I think they're sweethearts. We'll get to this a little bit later, but Sid is a chaotic genius. I would not. I would not choose any of them for my personal toy chest. Um, I would though take one of those speaking spells. You know what I yeah. mean? Those yeah, were, yeah, yeah. Those were cool. Um, the army men. I don't men, think I, I didn't have any of the, I didn't have anything like the speak and spell. No, me either. Um, so I liked all of that. Um, oh, this dog. April. Um, we can edit this out. I might keep it in, but we can edit it out. All right. Here's my. I'll probably keep it in. Here's my next question. <laughs> did you write this or did I? What's the question? Would you like to have a tea party with me? <laughs> Did I write this? <laughs> Wait, did you write that? You did. Because <laughs> I'm like, did I? Am I like fever dreaming? Because I do not remember. <laughs> all right, are you gonna ask me? Yeah, would you have a tea party with Mrs. Nesbitt? No. Why? First of all, Buzz is like my least favorite character, which I is okay. that because of Tim Allen? Well, no. Listen, this is the problem. Like. Back in the day, I loved Home Improvement, so I like tried to force myself to like Buzz because I liked Tim Allen. Now I have seen the error of my ways. I'm very much a Woody stan, so even though Woody's awful in this movie, Woody too. is horrible. But whatever. But I love Woody. Buzz like literally has major identity crises every movie every single movie he speaks spanish in one movie i just don't feel like i'm in my safe space with mrs nesbitt i'm not sure (laughs) there's a little bit of 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 chaos behind those eyes yeah i mean she she loved she had like a comment where she like loved the hat but like the apron was too much the apron was too much Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i just don't know um mrs nesbitt besides like the the etiquette i i just don't think it would be a really good time would you have a tea party with mrs nesbitt i don't know it seemed like antoinette and her daughter were having fun you couldn't tell they were were handless they were cordial they made some hand signals i guess okay um that question like literally i'm crying because i was like in what state of like psychosis did i write that and why would that be your second second question question um all right my next thing isn't a question it's more of a command here i want you to take a couple moments to defend sid because sid i feel like it's a really really bad rep like i feel like when we watch the movies as young children sid is the most terrifying thing we've ever seen now everybody knows a sid too now as adults who have seen will poulter in at least one movie yes. who looks very similar to sid i feel like his um mystique is kind of uh, rubbed off a little bit so defend him well i'm not gonna say that he's a good kid because i mean i think we've seen enough from him to know that he's not your average uh your average boy what like eight ten year olds something like that yeah, I mean he's 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 a he's a little bit of a nut job, but I will defend him by saying that did he did he hurt anything that he knew was living? No, mm, no. 
the dog, you know, Scud looked like he was having a good time when 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 Sid was blowing up the the, the army man. Um, <laughs> you know, um, Sid, I think, is a little bit misunderstood. He's he's rough around the edges. You know, he's from a working class family. Um, that really loved the 1970s. Yeah, the on that decor. the wallpaper was wild. So you know, we don't know what's going on in his life. He is. You know, he's performing experiments. Who among us did not experiment when we were children with things that normal people don't do? Who like, among us did, Like what? Who among us did not take toys into the woods and uh, hit them with baseball bats with our friends? Oh, my God. <laughs> who among us did not do that? Um, also, I have, a, I, have an, I have an alternative um, viewpoint on this because I don't know how many of you were avid like Cartoon Network watchers like I was. Um, which probably explains a lot about why I'm defending Sid. Um, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, he's a little dog and he's scared of everything. The show is legitimately terrifying and everything is grotesque and, and absurd and, and surreal. And he lives in nowhere, Kansas. And it's, it's it was a pretty freaky show. But if you think about that show, and this is not, I'm not making up any brand new analysis here, but it's basically, the show is from the dog's point of view. So... Looking at these monsters is just like it, it, what it is in reality. It's metaphorical. It's just the dog sees this stuff. It's not really what it is. It's just wild and crazy. And the dog doesn't know what, what this, you know, this stranger who showed up at the door really is. And to me, I, I think you look at that, you look at Toy Story, and you see it from the toy's point of view. And this kid's blowing up toys. And yeah. he's, he's sort of a monster in that way. I mean, yes, he's using explosives. That's probably real. <laughs> but... <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I see it more like he's one of these grotesque fantasies from, from like something like Courage the Cowardly Dog. Um, and not only that, I mean, you see him in, in, in later installments in the series and, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a garbage man, which I'm not going to hate on that. He seems like he has a productive job. He's a decent, decent guy. I mean, we don't, we never see him harming anybody. We see him bullying his sister, but that's an older yeah, brother kind of thing. I just think Sid, while he's not a, he's not, He's not the, uh, you know, maybe not an honor roll student. Let's put it that way. Um, but I don't think we see enough of him in this movie to understand, to, to say that he is a true sociopath or like that he's a terrible, terrible kid or he's doomed when he grows up. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think, I think if he knew that these toys were, were alive, he wouldn't have blown them up. Well, I think we can definitely say that based on the reaction that he had. When Woody was like... I want to know what that trauma is like. Yeah, that was wild. We don't need a Lightyear movie. We need a Sid movie. Well, you know, my defense of Sid uh, is exactly what you said, which he he grows up um, in, a, in a later installment to be a, a sanitation worker. And I think that, you know, sanitation workers are part of the backbone of our society. Nothing wrong with that. They probably make way more money than I do. Um, and so Sid, maybe he bought all these toys in his own, like, really nice house, and he's loving life with them. Who knows? It's possible. It's possible. I'm team... I don't know if I'm team Sid, but... I'm team give Sid a chance. Yeah, I like that. All right. Now, this movie, as you said, was a was a nice, tight 80-something minute. 88, I think. 88. I would have said even 81. Maybe. Um. So when you've got a movie that's less than an hour and a half, but seems to be a really great uh, kind of from start to finish full story... I personally don't find the sequels to have been necessary. Now, don't take that to mean that I didn't think the sequels were awesome. I actually really loved Toy Story 2 and 3. Um, Toy Story 3 in particular, you know, were the same age as Andy. So when he was going to college, that was when we were seniors in high school about and to was, go to college. It was that right? summer too, right? Yeah, yeah, it was like the exact timing. I, I went with a bunch of uh, kids that I went to high school with. I think you did the same thing. Absolutely. It was a, a big, big, big moment of, of kind of maturing and growing up into adulthood and moving on from childhood. I totally get that. I personally don't think it needed to be a originally a trilogy and now a, a set of four. Uh, what do you think? Well, 
I think you could sort of extrapolate this in a lot of ways. So, like, outside of series that are specifically set to be series, is any sequel necessary? I don't really no, know. No, I don't think so. I'm not team sequel besides Paddington 2. And 3 when it comes out. And 3, Midnight Showing, so, I will be there. <laughs> so, if we're talking necessary, I don't think at all. Like, you have a full, you know, there's like a little bit of an open ending with a little joke at the end with the dog. But there's nothing that needs to be solved. There's no new thing that needs to be explored. I mean, even if you look at Toy Story 2, a lot of it is exploring a lot of what Toy Story 1 explored. Like yeah. like Woody's sort of coming to grips with what he is, where he came from. It, you know, it goes into it deeper, obviously. But it's it's a lot of the same ideas. And it's sort of Buzz coming into his own as like the leader of the toys while Woody is you know, off doing his thing with Jesse and Bullseye and the Prospector. Mm -hmm. um, An owl. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is it, Wayne Knight? Oh, had to be, right? The god. The other <laughs> god. Um, so, no, I mean, I wouldn't say that they were necessary, but for the reasons that you mentioned, like, I'm glad they exist. Like, Toy Story 3 was still one of my favorite Pixar Movie movies, if not one of my movies. Too, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, when it comes down to straight up, Toy Story 1 versus Toy Story 2 versus Toy Story 3. I think Toy Story 2 is the clear weakest. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion. Not that it's... I mean, it's still great. No, I agree with you. Um, but Toy Story 1 and 3 are just excellent. And and when you put them... I mean, I and I and I agree with your opinion on 4. Like, 4 was good. Yeah, it was fine. It was good. I, I 4 was certainly not necessary. No. I think that 1 through 3 is as perfect of a trilogy as you're going to get. Mm. Um. I would put it above, you know, the, the Star Wars, the, the uh, yeah, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings. I would put Toy Story three, one through three, up against any of those film You've series. Heard it here first. Probably not first. I feel like that's not too. Crazy no, I'm sure opinion. it's not. Here's my problem, though. Like, okay, yeah, I think that you're right. Um, they're all the the original trilogy is wonderful, amazing. Yay! Oh my gosh. Here's the problem though is that Pixar then was like, yeah, let's give sequels to like all of our popular Pixar movies, and they're not as good. They're not as good. Are Finding they? Dory. I don't know why it has such a high percentage on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, I did not find that to be particularly well, uh, necessary in any way, shape, or form. Well, I, I didn't see Finding Dory. Except Ed O'Neill was in it. Okay. I didn't see Finding Dory, so I'm not going to comment on that, like, specifically. But when it comes to Rotten Tomatoes, I mean, the percentage is just the amount of people who No, it. even, like, a lukewarm Yeah, one. let's say... I, know, I, I, know. I don't know what the exact number is, but if, like, they give it a... If, they give it a 51 out of 100. I get that. And that's a like. I know. So I don't know. But I'm just like, can we not with sequels all the time? And they've gotten away from it. Well, but for a while there, right? You were getting like Finding Dory, Monsters University. Cars 3. Cars 87. Incredibles 12. Like, do we need any of those? No. No. I, don't I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen Cars 3. Three. <laughs> I saw the first two, which that was oof. But um, like I don't know. I just feel like it was a little bit of a. I wouldn't say a slippery slope because all of those movies, I'm sure, made bank. But oh, absolutely. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I do think that they that they saw. I don't know if there was a backlash, but I feel like if there was a little bit of Pixar fatigue, maybe for a little bit. I don't keep up with Pixar movies like that. Like yeah. I don't. I'm not everyone I'm watching. Um, but. So I don't really know like the details there, but I mean, clearly they made enough money where they, they keep making sequels and you could tie that back to Toy Story, but eventually they were going to make a sequel No, I and know. it was going to make a ton of money Yeah, you're right. because it's great. And people loved Monsters, Inc. And people loved the first cars. Like people just like, they, they like it. So, I mean, we can see what's going on with Marvel movies now where everything is, you know, like there's a ton of sequels. Sure. And they're all going to make money and they're yeah. all going to make a billion dollars. Yeah. And that's just what it was going to be at some point anyway. So Toy Story may have been the first in Pixar's line to do that, but not necessarily like it was never going to happen. No, I agree. Okay. Well, that brings me to my um, second to last question here. Where would you rank Toy Story 1995 in your Disney Pixar list? Like, is it top of the top? This is going to be a little bit of a spoiler because um, on the blog right now, we are about to start our... Disney picks our um, best of tournament. So obviously Toy Story is in the top 64 
of Disney plus Pixar movies. Um, so this may be a little bit of a spoiler as to where we're headed with the tournament. I don't, I honestly don't know where it's going to end up, but, no. um, Toy Story is probably on my Mount Rushmore. No, oh, yeah, I think so too. Um, at least, if not higher. <laughs> Who's number one on Mount Rushmore? Nobody. Is anybody like higher up? No. No, they're all in the same level. Do you mean like physical level? Yeah. Or like... Yeah, like physical <laughs> level. Like, is there like a number one on Mount Rushmore? When like I, a what, guy that's like higher up? When I picture Rushmore? it, I picture Washington on the left in the forefront. Yeah. Oh, does that matter? I don't know. I thought more like vertically. Yeah, I know what you were thinking. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So we've got what? It's it's Washington, Lincoln, Roosevelt. Who's the last one? Jefferson? No, no, um, not Jefferson. I'm looking it up right now because I forget. Uh, wow, that's so It's sad. Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, it Teddy is. Roosevelt, and Lincoln. Isn't that kind of random? Uh, I guess. It depends on who... It was completed in 1941. Like, to me, it's kind of like putting, like, you've got, like, Toy Story. You have Beauty and the Beast, which was the first. What, weren't they, like, the first animated movie to be nominated for Best it Picture? Be. Right? Be. You get The Lion King, which was made into, like, this amazing uh, Broadway thing. And then, like, you put, like, Oliver and Company. <laughs> <laughs> like, the Great just, Mouse like, Detective. Which, I love Oliver and Company, right? Billy Joel. It's great. But, Really? We're going to put that on there? Like, that's kind of interesting, Mount Rushmore. Well, not to get not to get too far into American history uh, on this Toy Story Listen, podcast. Roosevelt, God, love that guy. No, I'm, no, we're talking Jefferson, right? As the, the odd man out? Oh, sh- no. Ooh, oops. Um, no, okay. I was saying Roosevelt because he was just, like, so far afterwards, right? Oh. Because you got, like, two 1700s. You got an 1800. And the 1900s. Yeah, but why do we have two 1700s then? Because they were founding fathers. Yeah, but why not put the other ones in? Because they were seen as better presidents at, at the time. Uh, Adams. Yeah. Yeah. If you've I ever guess. seen Hamilton, yeah. You know, it doesn't do much Oof. anyway. Yeah. Um, okay, well, so I would also rank Toy Story pretty high. I gotta say. I would put it definitely, definitely on my Mount Rushmore. Um, but I don't know if it's number one yet. I have to think about. Yeah, it. Yeah, I really don't know. I mean, I there's a lot of there's a lot of them. What is your Mount Rushmore? Of of I'm not spoiling <laughs> it. We're gonna do our little tournament for the blog. Okay. Um. <laughs> no, no, no. Um. Who is your Teddy Roosevelt? It's really hard to say. I've got to think about it. I really there's so many Disney movies that I have to rewatch. Yeah. But Beauty and the Beast is on my Mount Rushmore for sure. And um, probably Monsters, Inc. Okay. Because I love that movie. I really love Monsters, Inc. And I don't know why. I just love the concept. I think the concept it's is great. on point. And, and, and John Goodman and uh, Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal are just incredible. Oh, my God. They're so good. All right. But that's for another day because my big question here... Does Toy Story go on Baby's First Watch List? And, w- like, what's our age range here? What do you mean? Oh, when? Oh, we're going we're gonna to add when? Oh, yeah, because when we do... Zero. Zero yeah. comes out, yeah. put in yeah. Toy Story. Yeah. Toy Story is on the TV. Yeah, absolutely. Really? Although, I kind of want Diner Drive-Ins and Dives to be on the TV when I give birth to so the first thing the baby hears <laughs> <laughs> what if he comes out and he's like yeah we're rolling out <laughs> oh my goodness um, comes out with frosted tips <laughs> that would be sunglasses on the back of his head like what did i eat <laughs> like the shake shack that i had tonight already made my stomach hurt so bad uh, turns out it turned my kid into guy fieri in the womb <laughs> um Okay, so you would put it like day one, we in here with Toy Story. Listen, there is a reason why this was our first movie that we're doing for this podcast. Sure. And it's because it's a layup. Yeah, of course. It's a layup. You're not you're not listening to this to this episode being like, Oh my god, I wonder if they're gonna put Toy Story on baby's first watch list. Of course they are. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> that is true. Um so okay. Um episode wait, one. Wait, no, wait. Do you want to pick the next movie now? I don't know. 
Do you? Do you have one in mind? I don't have one in mind. Uh, I don't either, but we could talk it out. Okay. Um, it's a little inside baseball here, which. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, so do you want to do one that's like that we're watching already for the 2000s or. That would probably be easiest, actually. Right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to pull up our list here. This is we're doing this live. We're doing it live, people. Oh. You're going to get to know what the next episode is going to be. Um, so the way we do this for our 2000s um, project is we watch a movie whenever we can. It used to be every night, but, you know, no. things have gotten crazy. So And I fall asleep immediately. Yeah. So uh, we watch a movie from 2000 and the next night we'll watch a movie from 2001 and, and so on until we get to 2009 and then we restart it. Um, so unfortunately for maybe some of you, all of these movies are not going to be Disney and Pixar movies. Um, so we started with Toy Story, but we're starting to, 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 to move on a bit. <laughs> Imagine we put like yee yee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yee yee is like a three hour, uh, <laughs> foreign language movie that, uh, we're going to watch because, you know, we watch, we're going to watch a lot of stuff, but I don't know if that's going to be the, uh, going to be the second one um we also plan on having movies that we, as, as Aaron mentioned with the age range like every movie we talk about on here is not going to be a birth movie um i mean the first movie i think my brother or me watched when we were a baby was apparently the godfather because that's just what my because dad you're literally italian what my dad does yeah um it would be gaudy if it happened now but oh um yeah <laughs> Gotti from day one baby's watch list yes uh so we got some stuff we got like so 2000 we've got um you know we've got remember the titans we've got miss congeniality uh we've oh, we've got <laughs> battle royale uh <laughs> 2001 we've got the fast and the furious um memento monsters inc um uh, Training Day, there's a Zoolander, 2002, there's Catch Me If You Can, and My Big Fat Greek Wedding. So we have a ton of like really, really, you know, different movies spirited away. Uh, so we are going to, eventually I think we're going to open it up to a, like a little bit of a poll so you guys can choose which one you want to hear next. But since we're sort of just bringing ourselves into things here, I think we should probably... Do the first two or three. Why don't we do School of Rock next? I love School of Rock. Okay. so It's one of my favorite. It's a Mount Rushmore movie. That, that is, that's going to be it. I Oh, my God. Wait. I'm so excited. I love yeah. School of Rock. Yeah. Okay. So this was Toy Story. Um, please let us know your thoughts on Toy Story. Um, at Motion Picture Madness on Instagram. Please do not critique us. Do not be mean to us. I don't want any negative feedback. So People please... are going to be mean to me regardless, so it doesn't really matter. No, they're not. Please only come with positive vibes and um, tell us your thoughts on Toy Story. I don't care if you're mean about Toy Story. I just don't want you to I'll be mean about I'll us. think a little bit less of you, but... <laughs> but only um, nice thoughts. Thank you. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> that was Toy Story. Um... Next up, we're going to get School of Rock, the Jack Black classic. Richard Linklater. Uh, oh, yeah. We're going to get into Linklater. We're going to get into, uh, what's her name? Who's the principal? Joan Cusack. Oh, yeah. Joan Cusack. <laughs> <laughs> She's so funny. Um, 109 minutes of electricity, that movie is. Oh, and it's less than two hours. Thank you. Um, yeah. So this was the first episode. Do you want to uh, wrap it up? Uh, yeah, I mean, thanks for listening. Uh, please uh, text us because you're our friends <laughs> if you're watching. And uh, let us know, um, yeah, your thoughts on whether Toy Story is vastly overrated, uh, which I know many of you don't think because on Letterboxd, every single friend I have um, that I know in real life Rank, ranked at five stars. Yeah, this is one of my <laughs> one of my like twenty or so five star movies. Yeah, um, but tell us that you listened, and we love you. Bye, guys. All right, see you later. <laughs>